Welcome from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Glenview on this first Sunday of Advent. My name is Pastor Chris Nepton. Thank you for taking this opportunity to join us and worship with us. We do hope that during this time of preparation and expectation in Advent that you would be drawn nearer to God because of what we do, and then also that you might return next week with a friend that they might watch with you. You can always find us here on our YouTube channel, HTLC Video. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and always find us at our website, myhtlc.org. Thank you once again for joining us, and we begin this morning with our order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We, on this first Sunday of Advent, do take time to bless our Advent wreath and also to light the first candle. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You call all nations to walk in your light and to seek your ways of justice and peace. For the night is past and the dawn of your coming is near. Bless us as we light the first candle of this wreath. Rouse us from sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes and welcome him into our hearts and homes, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Light one candle to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel, God fulfills the promise. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins and redeem us for your life of justice. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading of today is from Jeremiah 33. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Today's second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see 
you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take The Gospel reading for this first Sunday of Advent is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations. Confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves, people will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Maybe you remember the movie As Good As It Gets with Jack Nicholson from probably, well, over 20 years ago. Jack Nicholson is the main character, and he plays a man named Melvin Udall, who is a writer in the city of New York. Melvin doesn't have much use for people. He doesn't like people. He stays away from people. He's homophobic, and he is also dealing with obsessive-compulsive disorder. He only comes out of his apartment to go to his therapist appointments and also to one restaurant each day where he sits at the same table and is served by the same waitress. That waitress's name is Carol, and she's the only one on the waitstaff that can put up with Melvin's mess. Carol has a son who suffers from asthma terribly. And she has to take him to doctor's appointments just so they can manage his asthma. It's very challenging for her. She has to travel across town just to work this job and also back in order to get her son to these appointments. Melvin also has a neighbor across the hall from his apartment. And as I mentioned, Melvin is homophobic, and his neighbor, Simon, he's gay. Their relationship is not good, and Melvin treats Simon terribly. Simon has a small dog, and Melvin doesn't care for that dog at all. One day, Simon is on the street, 
and he gets beat up so badly that he has to go to the hospital and his dog is in the apartment. And it's only when Simon's agent, Simon is an artist, when his agent comes to the apartment to, to, to figure out what to do with the dog, that Melvin opens the door. And knowing how terribly Melvin has treated Simon, the agent convinces Melvin, in fact, pressures him, guilts him into taking the dog to care for it. Well, over time, Melvin begins to really like the dog's company. And when Simon comes home, Melvin doesn't want to give up the dog, but he has to. And it is earth-shattering for Melvin. And then, just a few scenes later, he learns that Carol is taking another job at a different restaurant that is closer to our house, so it's easier to get her son to doctor's appointments. And this, too, throws Melvin's world into disarray. His world is coming down. And he goes to his therapist unannounced, without an appointment, and he marches in, and his therapist says, what are you doing? You don't have an appointment. You can't be here. We're not doing this. But Melvin is in full crisis as his life seems to be out of control. His therapist stands firm and tells him, there will be no session for you today. You must leave. And Melvin goes out into the waiting room where there are a number of people waiting. And he says that line that gives the title to this movie. He asks them in their distress, what if this is as good as it gets? I share this movie this morning because our gospel lesson is all about distress. Where Jesus says, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Doesn't it seem that in these last days, in the last year, So much has happened that our world is being shaken, that even the heavens are being shaken. This is the case in Jesus' time. You see, as Jesus is speaking in the Gospel of Luke, as we hear it today, he's about to be arrested, beaten, tried, mocked, and put on a cross. The disciples' world is about to be shaken. Our world is being shaken in ways that makes us fearful, makes us fainting, if you will. And it continues to come, as it was in Jesus' day, as it was in our parents' time as it is today and likely will continue to be, we have to ask, what if this is as good as it gets? Lord, when will your kingdom come? When will your will be done as it is in heaven? When will it be done here on earth as it is in heaven? But Jesus says to us, these things are going to happen. And when they do happen, we'll see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and glory. And when these things begin to take place, Jesus says, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And then the parable of the fig tree parable of the fig tree where he says the kingdom of God is near. 
And this generation will not pass until these things have happened, have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Even in the midst of all this distress, dear people, the kingdom of God is near. It is here. It is not some far-off promise some in some far-away place. The kingdom of God is coming near. Your redemption has come near. Stand up. Lift up your heads. Live like it is here. Because Jesus' words, they stand. They will not fade. Christ's reign is not dependent upon our belief. Christ's reign is, in fact, here. It doesn't depend on how we feel. It is, and we can have confidence in that. And although it doesn't depend on us, We are called to take part in it, to bring hope and love to the world, to have confidence, to stand up, even though our worlds are being shaken. Even though we are fearful of what is going on around us, we know the promises that we have through Jesus Christ. And as Jesus says, when these things begin to take place, Stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. In fact, it is here. Although heaven and earth will pass away, my words will never pass away. So what is it that we are to do? I think Jesus gives us the what to in the last verses. He tells us to be on guard. Be on guard. To be watchful. To take care of. To preserve this message, this hope that we have. This confidence that we can stand up and raise our heads. To be on guard so that our hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, that they may bring us down. Look, it's going to come upon all who live upon the earth, as Jesus says. Guard the word. Guard the word that gives us hope. Stand up, lift your head, share that hope with others. Be the hope for someone else. When they are fearful, when they are trapped, when they are caught and bound up by their fear, be the messenger of God that comes to release them, to set them free, to liberate them. Those who are hungry, feed them. Those who are sad, sit with them and grieve with them. Be present with them. Those who are being persecuted, stand up for them. Those on the margins, bring them into the community. Treat them as Jesus would. Love them as Jesus would. Don't let the worries of this life get in the way of your taking part in the kingdom, which is, in fact, here. Jesus tells the disciples that these things will come to pass before this generation passes away. It happens every day. It happens in our lives. Things happen. Disasters come upon us. Terrible incidents happen, like a car running through a Christmas parade. People get hurt. And there is time to grieve. 
There is time to be sad, but we do so with hope and with confidence that good people are around, that people who trust in Jesus are around, that those who are being hurt will be redeemed, that those who seem to have no hope can have hope. These things are taking place. We have the opportunity to liberate others and to be liberated from the cares of this world that persist, that continue to come. But the one who continues to come, who will not fail, is here with us now, is in our midst, even when we don't understand, even when we don't recognize, even when we are in fear. Jesus is there. The Son of Man is coming on the clouds. If this is as good as it gets, then may we stand and raise our heads because our redemption, Jesus Christ, has drawn near. Amen. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice! In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and all places that yearn for God's presence. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all of creation. Hear us, O God. God of mighty redwoods and microscopic plants, fields and city parks, the wind and the waves, be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. Hear us, O God. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our communities. Hear us, O God. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing, and life transitions of every kind. We pray especially for the sick, including Dolly DeLusk, Lou Halfpap, Jean Hoggard, Annie Lynch, Sue Morency, Henrietta Mueller, Joe Nepsa, Ellen Sturm, Bev Tarno, Deborah Terzakis, Arlene Wistenberg, and others that we have not mentioned here but carry in our hearts. Hear us, O God. God of promises kept and new dreams awakened, shelter your people from destructive storms. 
We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters, especially those who have been affected in, so in southwestern Canada. We pray for the work of Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, and other relief organizations. Hear us, O God. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who journeyed with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and in uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. Hear us, O God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In this season where we recognize and wait for the coming of Christ and also of God's abundance through him, we give thanks to you for all which God has worked through you and that you have heard that call and shared it with others. Thank you so much for sharing what God has given you with this ministry here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, that we are able to gather each Sunday for worship and we are able to share these messages with you online. We thank you for the work that we do in the community. Certainly right now we're working with Youth Services of Glenview and Northbrook uh, for their holiday gift program and also by supporting the Northfield Township Food Pantry and many, many more. We thank you for your support of ELCA World Hunger Appeal, Lutheran Disaster Response, and Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. It's because of you answering God's call to share the good news of Jesus Christ, that the world may know God's love, that we are able to make a difference, to bring hope to people in this time. And so giving thanks to God, let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Through Jesus Christ, our pathway and our peace. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us for this time of worship. We hope that you have uh, found the joy of our Lord in it and have been drawn near to God because of it. We hope that you are able to join us once again next week, whether it be here in the sanctuary for in-person worship or you're watching us online again. Again, follow us on uh, YouTube HTLC video and invite someone to watch with you. This is such a great way to share the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we watch and wait and hope expectantly. Until we do gather again, please be well, stay safe, and receive this blessing. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God.